A design for life there from the Manic Street Preachers. Just one of the huge hits from their fourth album, Everything Must Go. First, you have mainstream success, critical acclaim and triple platinum status. Well, to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the album next year, the Manics have just announced a special concert in Swansea at the Liberty Stadium on the 28th of May. Well, I caught up with Nicky Wire earlier to see how he was feeling about it. Yeah, extremely excited and really nervous as well. I mean, we've been looking for a different venue. You know, we've done the Millennium Stadium, we've done Cardiff Castle, arenas, the O2 in London. There's not many places left, really, which we were scratching our heads a bit and um, wanted to do something a bit different. And going down west feels like a perfect venue. Really, There's a line in there, you know, alone, the, the Statue of Liberty looks so solemn on the TV and that's where the idea came from. Well, it's brilliant and it's so exciting. It's going to be the date that everybody's going to be putting in their calendars from today onwards. And it is a one-off concert, isn't it? What can fans expect at the concert? Will you be performing the whole album like you did for the Holy Bible tour this year? Yeah, I think we'll start off and we'll, um, we'll do the whole of um, Everything Must Go in this entire big it, uh, B-sides. Hopefully some new songs as well. We'll We're going to try and... Um, get two or three new songs ready for the for the second set as a bit of a bonus the bill is amazing super furry animals are supporting and public service broadcasting the first on so i think it's going to be a good valley for day it's like the good old days <laughs> isn't it yeah <laughs> with your mates there as well uh, but you know you were in your <laughs> mid-20s when you released everything must go you're yeah. in your mid-40s now how different is the nicky wire of everything must go to the present nicky wire well, I think I, can, I just control my brain a bit better now. I'm basically the same person, but I've learned <laughs> when to shut up a bit, <laughs> which I never did then. But we like the spoken Nicky Wire. Yeah? Oh, I know. I like to think I've matured, but really it's just a bit of a thought control process. <laughs> what about the limbs then? What Are, are they as, as um, fit and <laughs> as flexible as they used to be when you... Well, when I walked off stage at um, Cardiff Castle, they they didn't feel so good. But uh, (laughs) a couple of weeks off and some massage and some some walking, they're not feeling too bad at the moment, actually. I think with Everything Must Go, it's a much, it's a different beast to play. Holy Bible was really challenging and demanding and really enjoyable, but in a different kind of way, you know, and the lyrics are amazing. And it's a different challenge with Everything Must Go. We've practiced it a few times and it just feels good, really, and easy and... um, just, I don't know, communal. It feels like a really a communal record, you know, and uh, I think that that's why the, the set in the Liberty Stadium feels right. Well, you say communal. It was the album that mainstream, or yeah. took you mainstream, I should say. Um, it made you huge stars. Do you think, out of the 12 albums you've released and the three compilations, that this is your best album? Um, in many ways, yes, well, it's, it is. I, might, I change all the time because I'm probably the biggest fan of the band at all. I mean, James and Sean don't really care. <laughs> They're like, whatever, he's gone. Um, I, I'm the student of the band. And there is something, just the way we could take a, a, a lyric and a song like Design for Life and, be, uh, you know, have such a gigantic hit with it. Yeah. It's a pretty special time, you know, to, to have that first line, Libraries Gave Us Power, just being on top of the pops and singing that. It was... You know, we done up until then. We were still on a, an upward curve, and everything. You know, we were kind of getting lots of respect. But just a, that moment when you break into the mainstream and you you think you're slightly subverting it, it's a pretty amazing feeling. A design for life, Australia. Everything must go. Just three of the hits I mentioned there from this album, yeah. and this album, of course, without Richie Edwards, who also co-written and wrote some of the uh, tracks on this album. Yeah, it must be a bittersweet anniversary to be celebrating in some ways. And I suppose you're reliving what you did earlier on this year, of course, at Cardiff Castle with uh, the Holy Al- uh, Holy Bible album. Yeah, I mean, the Holy Bible was different because obviously Richie wrote most of the lyrics on that, good 80% really. Um, Everything Must Go is different. It's, it's, I think there's four songs which he was, um, which the lyrics were, we were working on before he disappeared. So to be honest, it never changes. He's always there. He's always a presence lyrically. And um, the, the gap when we play, you know, we, we always think about him We're at, wherever we are, wherever gig we're doing. So yeah. um, I think with Everything Must Go has always felt very cathartic record it felt like we were getting a lot out of our system and we were kind of talking to ourselves and our audience at the same time 
um, which is a very good trick to pull off if you can do it. Yeah, well, you've got more um, close um, members of the family as fans now. Well, I presume they are your children. Clara, who is 13, Stanley, yeah. who is 8. What do they think of Dad, the rock star? Well, my daughter's pretty embarrassed. Is <laughs> she? <laughs> As girls are, I think she is much more. Don't embarrass me, Dad. No one likes you. You, oh, you know, no. etc. She is, she's, she's much more that way. With uh, Stan, as good boys, as good sons are, he's, oh. he's very nice. Yeah. And do, I've got to ask you: Do they prefer One Direction? Because obviously, that big day at uh, in Cardiff <laughs> earlier this summer, um, were they torn, or was Clara torn more than Stan? Because obviously, you were at Cardiff Castle. One yeah. Direction played at the Motor Point Arena. It probably was the biggest musical day Wales had ever had, uh, especially it in Cardiff. Them, yeah. It was mad. It was bonkers. It what, was. Yeah. What stood out for? you that uh, that day and uh, the whole celebration of course I think for me it was the setting I mean I've seen a couple of gigs at Cardiff Castle but, but to actually be walking out on stage and have 10, 11,000 people singing you know pretty sort of difficult lyrics back to you in unison yeah. <laughs> whilst 500 yards down the road you had the exact opposite <laughs> going on <laughs> you know and walking around town it was just, you know, because I was doing a bit of shopping on the morning of the gig. Were just, you? Just, yeah, it was. What it was, were you shopping for? I was in the Army and Navy stores looking for some camouflage gear. And um, there was a lady in front of me and she was, uh, she was at the tail going, oh, I'm looking for some, from, for some camouflage stuff. I'm going to the Mannix later on tonight. And the bloke behind kind of sort of nodded and went, he's standing behind you. <laughs> oh, that is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> it was. Oh, that is brilliant. So did Clara go to One Direction or come and watch you? Oh, no, she's much more, um, she's got more taste than that. <laughs> <laughs> I think she, she's more kind of my Green Day, my chemical romance. She's a kind of... Oh, she's a cool dude. She likes to think she is. Oh, fair play to her. <laughs> she's got taste just like a father then. So are you a rock star on, at home as well? You know, well, you if like I tell you... I was cleaning the leaves out of the gutter yesterday. I don't know if that, that counts as being a rock star, really. Oh, you're a dream man in my, in my mind, then. A any man who does the dirty work. Brilliant. I must tell my wife that. <laughs> um, listen, we've got to talk as well about your last album, uh, Futurology. It is yeah. so well. And it seems like the Manics are in a, a real good place right now. And everyone's thinking, oh my gosh, is there going to be another Manix album? I think there will be. We are, you know, we have take, consciously taken a, a bit of a break from writing just to replenish ourselves, really, because with Rewind the Film and then Futurology, which went down so well, you know, it was a really productive year of a um, couple of years of constantly writing songs. So we're just trying to, you know, listening to every, Everything Must Go, that sense of, like, communal joy and mixed with a bit of Welsh melancholia. And it's a very direct album for us. So maybe we're taking a bit of inspiration from that for for when the next record comes, something uh, something direct and uplifting in a Manix kind of way. But yeah, I'm sure there'll be another record. Oh, that's great news. But obviously, James and Sean have got to make it back from Patagonia first. Well, so. I was going to gonna <laughs> mention that because you've been helping them to raise money for Valindra Hospital yeah. before their trek, of course. Uh, 22nd of November, it all kicks off. Um, are they fit and ready for this challenge? And does this mean your limbs weren't up to this challenge? <laughs> I just think they didn't want me there. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Moaning constantly <laughs> and, and stuff. But Sean's taking it very seriously, like typical Sean. He's been, he's really fair. He's been doing tons of walks and, yeah. um, you know, trekking around, a ways around Wales. So, uh, James, I'm not quite so sure, but um, that's James. He's, uh, he likes to, the magic of the moment is always there for James. <laughs> well, £17,000 uh, they've raised, or you've raised already, yeah. which is a fun, oh, that's an amazing amount of money. Oh, it's looking good for everyone who's going, I think. Yes. It's an amazing thing to do. And I think it'd be quite inspiring for the, I think the, the boys will come back a bit, in, you know, inspired with visions of Patagonia might, might uh, make it make its way onto the next record well exactly exactly and um, you've been known to organize tours that coincide with rugby tours and sporting occasions and I am yeah. thinking of the Euros <laughs> in France next June this yeah. would be a few days after your gig at uh, yeah. uh, the Liberties any plans of doing anything to coincide with the Welsh football campaign in France they might well be oh. I can't really I can't say it have, the you, moment, been thinking, have you been discussing it we have indeed, yes, we have indeed. And it feels like a bit of a send-off for Liberty as well, you know. It's like it's you said, really it's only 
10 days later i think it starts so you know good good send off to the boys as they uh, you know they prepare for france so yeah there might be a few surprises next summer that's for sure. oh my gosh I've got goose pimples. Uh, brilliant stuff. Nikki Wire, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. All the very best then. Um, have a great Christmas because we won't speak to you probably before then. Uh, but for people to know, the big date is Saturday, 28th of May, 2016, Swansea Liberty Stadium. And the Manic Street Preachers will be celebrating the 20th anniversary of Everything Must Go. And it's uh, first to the buzzers because it's going to be the, <laughs> the hot, the golden ticket in town. I might well be, yeah. Uh... Thanks a lot, Olivia. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you very much. Oh, Nikki.